Welcome back to my Awoken family. We're nearly 30,000 members strong. Now, let's buckle up and head on down that rabbit hole. Bidden from wearing certain glasses. Watch how this security acts when he sees that this guy's wearing AI glasses. Apparently, these glasses make your face distorted. And security did not like that. They shouldn't get to the side if your picture's taken or not. This is something straight out of the New World Order. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and stay weird. AI glasses, which distort your face. I didn't know such a thing existed. I'll have to look into that one. But I don't think that's what's going on here. Now, on this video clip, I saw in the comment section some people saying that some club owners do not allow people with sunglasses to wear them in the club. Something to do with the, you know, safety of the other patrons so that if they commit any crimes, they could see someone's face clearly and have them brought to justice. However, there was another individual who was wearing sunglasses videoing this whole thing on their phone. So I don't think it was that. I just think that this person was up to no good. Someone made a complaint maybe he was hassling those people in that booth who knows as far as it being ai face distorting glasses i'm not so sure i'd have to do some research into this technology and see if it even exists if you look up who is the very first astronaut his name is Wan who what's his nationality chinese okay Wan. Yeah. like j u a n no w a n oh <laughs> that, there's the, i got it i need some tactics uh <laughs> Okay, this is a legend in the Chinese culture, okay? Okay. So, Wan Hu, he wants to go to the moon. He compiles a set of rockets, builds a chair, and they build 47 rockets underneath that chair. He's strapped into this chair. They light the rockets, and he shoots into space. Smoke surrounds the crowd, and he disappears into the sky to never be seen again when he dies. <laughs> what? That's the end of the story but he's technically the first astronaut so much so that they've actually even named a crater on the dark side of the moon after <laughs> Wan Hu. no way so he's the guy who first invented space exploration but he died while doing it that's why funnily enough i already knew this story i just forgotten the name of the person who was supposedly the one who rode that chair but i don't think they actually made it to space that would have taken a tremendous amount of propulsion and i'm sure the chinese were there explosives and fireworks would have been able to pull it off if they had the understanding of astrodynamics but they just made really good fireworks and ancient missiles but i think it's pretty cool that there's a crater on the moon named after him let me know if you'd heard that story before this is unbelievable unbelievable you know how you're all saying ufos don't exist they're not real aliens aren't real none of this is real it's a psyop because aliens don't exist well the government has passed along a new handbook for all the police in the United States to abide and follow. Look, police across the United States give a new UFO handbook as they warn craft pose a significant threat. Really? Really? Now you're deciding that these things are threatening? I, I, I can't go any further with this. UFOs are real. Obviously, the government is confirming it to the point where they're passing out handbooks on how to f***ing deal with them. I'll see myself out. Oof, looks like things are ramping up with the old uh, Project Bluebeam, right? When do you think it's all going to kick off? And how do you think it's going to kick off? See, I'm under the impression what will happen is nothing to do with an extraterrestrial presence. I feel like there's going to be some kind of false flag rapture or second coming of Christ. I feel like that's way more plausible. But it's very, very, very suspicious that they have supposedly handed out these little booklets on how to manage the UFO issue and what dangers they supposedly pose. Be curious to read that booklet myself find out what it says about it if this is real then it does confirm that the government has been aware of the existence of these craft for some time and for whatever reason they suddenly find it pertinent to deliver some form of training and protocol on how to handle these things to the respective authorities it doesn't sit right with me at all what do you think it's all about is it just precursor to a false flag invasion does it run even deeper than that let me know okay so this was filmed in sochi russia right on the east coast of the Black Sea there. And you can see in the video, there's some beachgoers that are rolling a spherical object up onto the beach that's got some spice coming out of it. Now, 
I just have one question for you guys. Have you ever seen that movie Finding Nemo? Well, that's what that thing is. That is a sea mine, probably a Soviet era sea mine, meaning that it's probably delicate to the touch. Probably don't want to touch it. Unfortunately, the Black Sea has been heavily mined by the Ukrainians and also by Russians because of them trying to, you know, ever since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, you know, they're trying to attract each other's ship numbers. I think it's probably been he more heavily mined by Russia more than likely just because of the fact that they're trying to prevent shipping from getting into and out of Ukraine during this conflict. The point is, is these things can float right off and they don't have to stay where they're at they like tides and weather can push them around so if you see one of these maybe you don't touch it so you don't blow yourself up oh classic darwin award candidates there ridiculous however i saw somewhere that it may require some kind of magnetism to actually trigger the mine and detonate it not sure if that is actually the case but Either way, you wouldn't find me anywhere near anything which is, even if it's supposedly decommissioned, explosives. No way. It's not worth the risk. How do those people not know what that is? Wild. We've got a problem. Men might be going extinct. Science shows the human Y chromosome needed to make a man is fading away. A person's biological gender is determined by special chromosomes in their DNA, which come in two types, X and Y. If you have two Xs, you get a female. But if you have one X and one Y, a male. A few years ago, researchers noticed that the Y chromosome required for men to exist has been shrinking over the past 200,000 years or so, with some experts estimating the Y chromosome to completely leave our DNA within the next 5 million years. And with our current DNA structure, no Y chromosome means no men. Obviously, having less men around would cause society to crumble, with reduced fertility rates leading to the entire human population to slowly decline into extinction. But still, other scientists claim that our DNA would adapt and move over to another chromosome to make males. Just like we see in species like the uh, mommy spiny rat who have no Y chromosome yet the males are mailing just fine. Although they are endangered aka on the verge of extinction. Are humans going to share the same fate or does our DNA have a trick up its sleeve? Guess we'll find out in about 5 million years. Okay, that is slightly concerning. It'd be good if we had some answers as to why the Y chromosome is shrinking and maybe we need to start taking some kind of precautionary measures at this point to ensure that humanity is able to sustain its existence but five million years is a long time but i suppose getting a head start on it now will provide us with a solution before it reaches the point of no return any ideas what you think the cause of that is though the whole schoolboy nine situation gets crazier yet again today of course it does it doesn't stop so I'm sure you're all very aware of the whole situation and somebody had apparently found his actual address online. And a few days ago, this video emerged of this alleged person smashing his windows and turns out it was the wrong house. Wasn't his, no. Obviously, this is not good. We do not condone any of this and the guy is definitely in big trouble. Now they thought they had the right house by the look of the hallway and the doors, how? But it turns out that he had actually moved house a couple of months ago, so yeah. And of course, the whole conversation is, where is he now? Many people saying he's in London, some in America, like all over, but we don't know for sure. What we do know is that apparently he is being investigated now. We know that his name featured in this magazine. There's been a lot of talk about this whole Stephanie account that apparently is still him on Facebook right now. A lot of these photos are just so bad. I can't show them on here, it will get taken down, but there's a full uncensored version on my YouTube, link in my bio. I mean, the whole thing just keeps getting scarier day by day and there's more videos popping up of this whole situation but by far one of the worst has to be this that i found yesterday and spoke about genuinely makes me feel violently ill again i genuinely can't explain what all of this means here but it is bad but yeah i guess what's going to come out next make sure you hit that follow button and i'll keep you updated this smart schoolboy thing is just bizarre it really is i mean it reminds me of like the creepy pastors from back in the day i feel like this eventually will become some kind of like weird internet law for future generations to stumble upon and freak themselves out with it's hard to know though what's true and what's not with all of this there could be people which are stoking the story by fabricating certain things like those lyrics on the genius thing it kind of looked like i mean anyone could have made that account and posted those lyrics just to try and make this seem even worse than it is i have no doubt that this person is a complete creep and they've got some serious psychological issues it could also be a prank which has just gone way too far either way it is damn unsettling let me know your thoughts what do you think about this whole thing so this is a load stone and this is a magnetic stone that sinks up to the earth it actually is used for compasses so they actually used to use this for a compass all the time and they would use the load stone and be able to determine which way to go you almost think of it like black rock you know that whole thing a black stone 
stone, a magnetic stone, stone that controls a lot of things. It's interesting, when you go up north and you look at the mountains up there, the volcanoes that are up there, big black rock up there. The other one I have is the tiger's eye, which is really cool. This is the one that's connected to the third eye, keeping you very focused and then tuned, just the shaking them together. That actually creates energy. As I've taken like two rocks, for example, I'll shake them both in my hand, and then I'll notice that they both start to vibrate. And that's another form of energy that goes into piezoelectricity, and another form of energy. So when things are actually hitting one another, creating energy. So I always keep them in my hand, always keeps me focused. But stones are really cool. The more you get into stones, the more you get into lapis, alakai, rubies, garnet, you know, all these beautiful stones. And they go back into the whole petrified thing. I was actually just watching a video by Stellium 7 and the Archivist with an analog, two great souls. They were talking about about how petrified trees would result in stones and they would result in silver and gold and all these different materials. So if you really start to think about where your stones are coming from that are all over the land or copper or gold or silver, start to think about trees. You find all these mineral deposits so very deep in the ground. Interesting idea though. There's two stones he had at the beginning, the lodestone and the, was it the tiger stone he said? I'll have to get myself some of those and see if what he says is true about making them have, making them have kinetic contact and see if they continue to vibrate after the fact. Do you collect minerals or crystals? And if if you do, why? What have you got? And what are the benefits? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, frequency following response. The idea that your brain will entrain to an external signal and begin to lock onto that signal and begin to mirror that signal. Um, you can do it through a lot of different um, external means, but one of the simplest is the flicker rate. And anyone studying psychology in any reasonable institution today is going to learn about frequency following response. So if you're in front of a television set, as simple as that is, and if you look at the you know, the, the, the white wall behind you as the TV is flickering at you, usually it's incoherent. You know, there's no rhythm to it. But there are rhythms that show up. Check your advertising. Because in about 20, 30 seconds, you can entrain to that flicker rate. Now, you come in from work. You're fatigued. You're tired. You sit down. You gather the news and commercial feed of the day, the programming of the day. Yeah, think about it. You know, they're even honest about it, right? <laughs> they just don't think about it this way. It's a different line in the definition in the dictionary. The programming takes place, and your spouse is hollering, dinner's ready, dinner's ready, and you're, you are in a light trance. You are literally in a light trance, accepting the news feed, unconsciously taking it in. This is fundamentally the simplest method of, of mind, mind control. It's, it's, a, it's a flicker rate of uh, a television set by somebody who knows what they're doing. I can really get behind this theory only because we know that people which are epileptic are prone to seizures from flashing imagery, especially something which is occurring on a particular frequency. And I'm sure these frequencies can be modulated depending on the transmission or the broadcast present on the screen at any given time. Let me know your thoughts. Do you believe this is true? Do you think they use television as a way to brainwash people using the flicker rate? Late to see how long it would take for it to melt. 12 minutes on the counter in a normal home and it doesn't really look like it melts. I gave it more time and after about 23 minutes, this is what it looked like. You guys, the next day, 15 hours later, this is what the ice cream sandwich looks like. Is this what fake cheese does? It doesn't melt, it just kind of blooms, like it's gonna burst or some shit? Okay, what is up with food in America? Because look at this jelly, it's like goop. Usually, when I, I remember being a kid growing up, the jelly would be like a thicker consistency. I was cutting my right and for some reason I just thought about putting a fucking magnet on there I was just eating my chips when I felt something big Yo, I swear I've had this watermelon for maybe four or five days. Went out of town, came back, it literally exploded. Look at this.
Boy, oh boy, that poor fella pulled out basically a fully seasoned potato out of that bag of crisps, or chips as you call them in the state. As far as the watermelon is concerned, I could understand to a point if it rotted for long enough, there might have been some kind of gas buildup which would have caused it to explode. Maybe, although the skin did not look right. It looked almost plastic, didn't it? I've seen something else in the past about meat being magnetic. People were taking magnets into a supermarket and they were putting it on different packages and it was sticking. Hard to confirm whether this is true. It may have just been the fact that that magnet or there was something on the material of the packaging which made the magnet stick to it. Whether there was anything actually magnetic about the contact, I don't know. But I have no doubt there are heavy metals present in all these food products because there is in the water we drink. You know, check your tap water. I use a distiller and I have to clean it every single week because the buildup of contents in that thing is just, it's beyond. It looks horrendous. In fact, I'll put a picture of the inside of my distiller right here now. As you can see, the before and after images of where it's dirty and clean is shocking. And that's just tap water here in the UK. Let me know in the comments below if you take any precautionary measures to ensure your safety when it comes to purchasing food and drinking fluids. I'm doing this video today to bring awareness of what's going on in Southern California, not to create fear mongering or wild, crazy theories, but really to talk about the facts and what's going on now. Um, if you haven't heard, in the area specifically around Rancho Palos Verde, the ground is literally shifting and cracking below their feet to where neighborhoods will soon disappear into the ocean. Now, I did a couple of things, pulled several videos of the area so you can see actually the devastation that they're dealing with. Also, during all of this, there's a huge wildfire occurring in Highland, California that literally looks like a volcano is going off. It's not a volcano. It is truly a wildfire, but it's just so much going on. So we had questions. Are there an increase in earthquakes? You know, there's people on social media watching the propaganda that there's going to be a huge tsunami or that the San Andreas fault is ready to explode and the big one's coming. Um, so I asked AI, as we know, AI is a huge tool in our current day, every everyday use. Uh, and I asked it, is there an increase in earthquakes for 2024? I did confirm that there is. There's been quite a bit of an increase in Southern California. I also asked it about the San Andreas fault line. Um, and what it was able to say was that scientists have estimated that the fault does erupt every 150 years to 200 years. The last time the San Andreas fault line erupted was over 200 years ago. So with that factual information, what we can confirm is that it is overdue to erupt. So the next question is, is when does it anticipate the eruption of a San Andreas fault line? And AI gave the answer of within 30 years. Now, this is all, all hypothetical. Does it mean that it'll happen or it could happen or it could happen anytime? We don't know, but we can't live with that mindset of the world is ending. Otherwise you'll stop living. But what we can do is prepare, watch the signs, watch the animals, watch just the earth itself. Definitely something is happening in Southern California. Does it mean the big one? Or does it just mean climate change, global warming, everything man-made is causing all of this? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. I would not want to be in California right now. Been getting a battering there between the floods, the fires, the earthquakes and everything else. It's just not a great place to be, if I'm honest with you. What makes me glad to be a UK resident because our weather is pretty boring. You know, we, we get the odd bout of flooding every so often. If I was like tornadoes, earthquakes, volcanoes, hurricanes, we get nothing like that. So I count myself lucky in that respect. I tell you what, if I was a resident of California, I'd be probably looking to move state. Just not worth the risk. All right, I'm back to break down the weekend's concert. It goes way freaking deeper than you could even imagine. Most people won't even comprehend because it literally goes into Eastern mysticism and ancient gods and a whole bunch of crazy freaking stuff. And it even goes into the birth of the weekend and who he really is. Let's start at the basis of this whole thing. This is a religious concert. It takes place in a very religious time. You may know it by Tartaria when amazing buildings were all around the world and churches were carved into actual mountains. He's dressed as a freaking priest, but what kind of priest? Look at the side of his robe on his head, he has a sun on there. Helios, Apollyon, Abaddon, Lucifer, the Lightbringer, that's what this is about. And I want y'all to notice right here how many horses Helios is riding. One, two, three, four. Revelations chapter six, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? This goes very deep. 
we'll get right back to Helios in a minute because there's some entity trapped behind this wall. I wonder who it could be. And this is an ancient church literally mimicking the churches that were built in stone and in the mountains that the locals said was no mystery that it was built by literal angels. Literally the ancient Ethiopian Orthodox churches that were literally built when angels were among men. So when was that exactly? Yeah, it seems like someone's lying about history. So you figure if angels were building literal freaking churches in the mountains, it'd be in our history books. But it's not. So I told you guys last night my reel, there was just not enough time in a minute and 30 seconds to really go over everything with The Weeknd, his concert. But let's start here. It's never been hard to find demonic things with The Weeknd. Look at all these red robes standing in front of a full moon. But what happened to this moon? It turned into a blood moon. Look into the significance of a blood moon in these kind of people. So why am I bringing you back to this concert and not the most recent one? They're connected. Look right here at these buildings in the background. It's Tartaria, again. And more symbolism with the blood moon and then some light bearer. It's getting pretty interesting now, right? So about 10 years ago, these very, very odd pictures popped up on the internet of the weekend as a baby. It took me almost an hour to even find one of them for you, but I found them. Check it out. Originally, this was a set of pictures with The Weeknd as a baby, his mom, both wearing some kind of robes, and the others you can see more clearly, but this around his neck is actually Baffle as a baby, you guys? Like I said, this stuff goes way back, and the family trees of the demonic start young. Now back to this concert. So we have The Weeknd being a priest, a priest of the sun, or Helios, on this medieval building built by angels themselves and there's this huge entity trying to break out. Who is he and what's he breaking out of? Part 2 later. Trust me, you do not want to miss it. This is the craziest concert I've ever seen in my life. This is the full breakdown part 2 and here's what you need to know. If you didn't see part 1, go back and watch it. But a really quick recap. They're doing a religious celebration at a Tartarian church in the medieval ages. Medieval ages that was built by literal angels with humans. We proved it in the first video. And that in all the man's con, they're bringing out the same being, which is the Lightbringer. Which is also Helios riding the four horses of Revelation chapter 6 of the Apocalypse. So here's part two, enjoy. This huge entity trying to break out, who is he and what's he breaking out of? I'm seeing people wake up, but their ideals are still twisted. People are trying to say that the Statue of Liberty is chained up. No, it is unchained. The chain, the shackle is broken. And again, the Statue of Liberty is literally Satan himself. Apollo, Abaddon, Helios, the list goes on forever. So Satan is trying to break out of his confinement with one of his highest priests. Just like here in the Chicago concert with the Blood Moon bringing upon the Lightbringer. Y'all, the in God we trust on your money is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Clearly so with this depiction right here. But even further, the in God we trust wasn't even on the very, very old money from the United States, showing that something big had transpired between the decades. And to now, there is a certain God that they trust in. Why, it couldn't be, right? Now speaking of the money, so the stage is set for the concert at a medieval or Tartarian type time when supernatural things were happening on the earth, the same exact time as the Byzantine Empire. Here's a coin from the Byzantine Empire having Jesus' face on it. It gets way crazier. These are called anonymous follies because they do not display the name or portrait of any emperor, instead emphasizing the authority of Christ over the empire. Did y'all just freaking hear me? And the Byzantine Empire is known for its paintings always showing angels among humans. I'm telling you guys, you're just seeing the very tip of the iceberg. And hundreds of years ago, coins were known to have the name of the Father on them. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. At a time when angels were among men helping them build churches. Again, the Ethiopian Orthodox said it was no mystery. They know exactly how they got there. I have tons of images of these coins and people try to debunk them, but there's way too many to debunk. Especially with all these circumstantial evidence. So tell me why nothing is adding up. Like, none of these cents are equaling dollars. What's going on? Well, my friends, that's all part of the game. Remember, Satan is the master of deceit. He is the very first liar since the very beginning and the father of all lies. So you wonder what The weekend has been doing all of this time, huh? He and they and most of unrealized humanity are all celebrating and worshipping the empire of their father, the devil. And we're still just brushing the very top of this very elaborate thing called life in the 21st century. Much more to come. Whew. Well, 
I mean, I know they like to put all this kind of theater right in your face, but things definitely seem to be heading in a more satanic direction from a visual perspective. Now, it could all be that they're just holding these huge occult and satanic ceremonies and the unwitting participants in the crowd are all contributing to some kind of energy harvest or some kind of wild thing like that. Depends on what you believe in. I'm not saying that's what I believe, but it's a theory I've heard. One of the things which I keep thinking about is how fear is such a big thing now and what part does it play play in our lives? Why is there so much of it around now? And is there some way, some lost knowledge on how that can be harnessed to fuel something we can't even begin to comprehend? I think back, it's gonna sound silly, but Monsters Inc, the harvesting of the screams of the children, I think there's a deeper message there. There's something very powerful about a large congregation of people in a small space. This is why there's atmospheres in religious buildings where there's a large gathering of people. Things get very emotional and it's the same with festivals and concerts. And you can kind of see a similarity between a preacher and a pulpit giving a sermon and one of these musical artists are up on a stage performing in front of all of these people a lot of crossovers very very interesting stuff let me know your thoughts in the comments below but that just about does it for today's episode i hope that you enjoyed the clips we watched if you did please drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content i release a video every single day at 8 p.m uk time and if you have not already done so please join our discord community the conversation there continues well on after the video ends but for now stay well stay safe and stay curious until next time